till death do us part part two so i've been reading a really really good book by um dr sue johnson and it's called hold me tight and the idea is that um oh well so the first chapter was talking about love and the different definitions of love that people have given and some people that believe that love is um just kind of like a thing that we do to kind of keep the human race going and um, some people have talked about it's kind of mutual um um uh, mutual understanding of each other some people just see it as um you know some a give and take type of thing but she goes back as far as a mother and a child and now this book is about marriage or long-term romantic partners right and um so she talks about how and i thought this was just mind-blowing so she talks about children whose mothers are there for them and children whose mothers are not really there are not there for them and children whose mothers are kind of like unpredictable and if your mother is there for you then um you're say you're secure you're secure in yourself so if your mom leaves the room you're not really panicking because you know she's gonna come back and um, the children who's uh, whose mother is hardly ever there or kind of unpredictable they act up and when the mother comes back they're really kind of angry or not interested in the mother so she talks about that and then she talks about this guy i can't remember his name but in the 40s in the 1940s who came up with this idea that um you know that children need to be held and hugged and comforted and that physical touch and the presence of a parent is really important because back in those days um back in those days um parents didn't want anything to do with their children as such so if a child is crying if they were fed and if they were changed they didn't hold them or hug them or anything like that and then um he himself the psychologist who i cannot remember the name um his parents never ate with him so and then when he got older they would eat with him just on sundays and just for dessert how crazy is that so he never got to see his parents who was raised by nannies, never got hugs, never got kisses. Um, so anyway, he notices this, um, this need for physical touch, notices this need for emotional bonding, emotional connection, right? So fast forward many, many years later, Dr. Sue Johnson comes to this realization that when people are in a marriage or in a long-term romantic relationship, they come to depend on each other, wait for it, the same way that a parent depends on a child. Not that one is superior to the other, right? But they both mutually depend on each other for this emotional bond and for security for protection they depend on each other so much so that when you start feeling insecure you start acting out like a child so a lot of marital problems a lot of problems in our marriages a lot of problems in our relationships it's because it's because we are not feeling secure now i i was reading that chapter and i was just like oh my god what because in 2018 at the worst time in my marriage it was because in my head i did not feel secure i did not feel protected i did not feel um like like this mutual dependency was there this um emotional connection this thing i was looking for wasn't there um, and I remember one night going to bed, crying, sobbing. And I was like, you know, sometimes I feel like such a child. Sometimes you'd be crying, right? And when you, when someone can't hear you, you're just like, <laughs> like you, you try and kind of cry some more. 
<laughs> so that they can hear you. So I did this this one night. I'm crying and um and I'm trying to get Tim's attention. But the dude just like turns, you know, comes into bed, turns the other way, doesn't even cuddle me and sleeps. And I am telling you, I was just like, okay, so I'm alone in this world. I, I, I have a child, I have a toddler, and I have another baby on the way. So I'm pregnant, super pregnant at this point. And I never felt so alone. And I remember months later when we finally got talking about this, just saying to him, I thought I could face anything in the world because you were with me and it showed me just how much I depended on him and um fast forward now to like we're in 2020 and um like I've had moments where I've been really unhappy and I'm just like if things don't change I'm leaving and watching my husband tear up and be like if you leave I don't know what I would do so I'm reading this chapter and she's talking about this kind of dependency on a man and a woman or a man and a man or a woman and a woman whatever relationship you're in this romantic relationship you're in and how we come to depend on each other and when our needs our love needs are not being met and um, we're not feeling secure we're not feeling loved or um or safe like a child will feel with its mother then everything everything starts falling apart so you can communicate as much as you like you can compromise as much as you like but if if both or one of the parties are not feeling this emotional connection, this bond that you once had, where you felt so secure, so much so that you decided to dedicate the rest of your life to this person, if you don't have that, then you know you just feel like you can't, you cannot see the future in that relationship, and like it's just mind blowing. And it makes me think, so, you know, I'm always going to bring it back to the Bible. It makes me think of that verse that says, a man shall leave his family and cleave to his wife. Like, so you leave your parents, right? These people that you've depended on for so long and you need them. And when they're not there for you, you act out, you go crazy, whatever when they're there for you you're safe you're secure you turn out into half a decent human being so you leave those people and you cleave to another and literally the cleaving we i think we've underestimated it we've we've kind of downplayed it but it's major it's massive like we come to depend on each other the same way a child depends on its mother and the mother on its child on on her child like what anyway so this psychologist and um, this dr sue johnson she says that she got a lot of backlash from psychology a lot of backlash from people just being like but maybe then you're saying that we're we're codependent we're needy are we not supposed to be autonomous and you know full human beings who don't need other human beings let me tell you that as much as we're supposed to be our own people life is miserable without other people and I think there's this inbuilt thing in us to find people or find a person who gets us, who loves us, who supports us and to make a life with them. And um, I think it, it's just an inner built thing inside of us. And even if it's not a romantic partner, we're always looking for friends who are safe, friends who are there for us, friends who we can depend on, friends who don't make us feel insecure and like we're not of value or worth and i think even taking it to the next level as well we're always looking for a relationship that will never fail us and for me i believe that that relationship comes from the divine um the divine 
and us merged into one and um and um but not just that and as well as being bonded with the divine um I'm going to take, take it from my context of Christianity, where the Bible says that um, Christ can dwell in us through faith. So he lives in us, um, or they live in us. I, I prefer that, actually, and um, because God is neither male nor female. Ah. And um, so they come and dwell in us, and when they dwell in us, then our relationship with other people um, is really strong as well um but we are so interdependent not codependent because codependent is um kind of not being able to function without other people so we're able to function on our, on our own but life is also better when we function with other people so we're so interdependent and if you are married or in a long-term relationship so i'm the okay I want to say this if you're in an abusive relationship leave i would never tell you to stay i'm one of those people i'm like you you abuse me emotionally physically sexually whatever way like i am gone i will probably punch you god pro <laughs> got my need to intervene um because i might be tempted to take matters into my own hands but leave i'm all, I'm all about leaving if people are abusive to us um but if you're not in an abusive relationship and you've reached a difficult moment where you're you can see your relationship on the decline you can see it dying um i believe there's hope because like look at me and tim i feel closer to him now than i've done in years and it's literally because we've come to realize that we depend on each other that we love each other and it's all about nurturing that love and nurturing that security that um that that security that we both need from each other so where he doesn't feel neglected and I don't feel neglected and we're both kind of you know serving each other in love and with love and it's the best thing that literally I've ever done like just being there for him and him being there for me and like even our kids can tell like you can tell Elijah oh bless him Elijah's four and like he is such a sensitive child like he can tell he can always tell when things are right when things are wrong and oh you should see his face like when when we're getting along and things are great and he loves it when we all sit down and watch a movie and um have some snacks and stuff and um and he looks you can see him looking at his daddy looking at me and then he holds our hands and then he comes up to me and he loves rubbing my face like this and then gives me a kiss and now his brother has started copying him um ezekiel who's two and um i think there are so many broken relationships that haven't needed to be broken um i think we just neglect each other we don't feed the way, the same way that we used to try when we were dating the same way that we used to try in that first year of marriage dating each other pouring into each other looking after each other being there for each other no matter what getting a bus all the way from dublin to belfast and going out of my way so that tim can have a lovely birthday and him doing the same when we're dating and him driving all the way to i think wicklow or somewhere like he would cork at one point he drove for the seven hours to come and spend time with me like you know those things where you just you pour into each other and um, i think we give up on those things and it's it, it kills our relationships so try and reignite that magic yeah